everybody. My name is Mandy. I work at the World of the Insect at the Cincinnati Zoo. And it's a really good year for us at the Insect House because uh, the cicada emergence is happening, if you haven't noticed somehow. So we are on zoo grounds today and I'm standing in front of a tree that's really, really active with cicadas. Um, they have emerged all around the ground, around the tree. And they've climbed toward the tree and now they're molting behind me. Uh, into their adult form. So 17 year cicadas, that's what we call them, right? Or periodical cicadas. They have a really interesting, one of the most interesting life spans of any invertebrate that I'm aware of. So they spent the last 17 years underground as nymphs eating the juices off of roots of shrubs and grasses and trees. Uh, and then we're just lucky enough to be here on the day that they all emerge. Like we have cicadas that pop out every year, um, the bigger ones that you guys may have seen in your backyard, and those take a lot less than 17 years. And then we've got 13 years cicadas. There's a whole bunch of different types of cicadas, but the ones we know and love here in Cincinnati are our periodical cicadas. One thing that bugs are good at is reproducing in massive numbers, um, and cicadas are no exception. So basically, one of the main reasons that cicadas are so successful. And when I say successful, I mean abundant, um, is because they reproduce in massive quantities. So if we only had three or 400 cicadas pop out, you know, on zoo grounds this year, many of them would just get eaten by birds and maybe only a couple would survive. But if we have a couple million pop out on zoo grounds, uh, we have much higher numbers that survive and go on to reproduce, lay their eggs and keep going. So this one here, I'm gonna flip it over and find out. This is a female. I don't know, so that spiky structure there, that is her ovipositor. That is what she uses to lay her eggs. So that's what's coming up next, right? So we've got the cicadas have emerged after 17 years underground. They're drying out their wings, they're flying around, they're making all sorts of racket, and that is to attract a mate. And once they mate, the female lays her eggs in tree branches. Now you might wonder, if she lays her eggs in tree branches, how do the nymphs end up underground? Well, what happens is a couple of weeks after she lays her eggs in the branches, um, the eggs will hatch and they will fall to the ground where the nymphs that are freshly hatched will start eating on things like grass roots. Um, so they eat roots that are really, really close to the surface of the ground at first until they get a little bit bigger and then they can go a little bit deeper. Also in my hand I have, I found on the ground here, a nymph that has not yet molted into an adult you can see that. So this one just crawled out of the ground and in a minute here I'll put it on the tree so that it can molt. But you can see it's still in its nymph stage. So it doesn't have wings yet and it looks like it would really love to get to a tree trunk and molt. So I'm gonna put him over here. Look this is one that has just come out of its exoskeleton and is metamorphosing or molting into an adult. And so she's going to expand her wings over the next like 20 minutes or so and then she'll start to dry out and by this evening she'll be flying around with the rest of her friends. This is a male, so I don't have a female in my hands anymore, she flew away, but you can see that the end of his abdomen looks a lot different. Also, it's pretty subtle, but he is vibrating in my hand right now and that is him trying to call. So he has this specialized structure called a timbal that he uses to make all this noise that we're hearing all over Cincinnati, right? and that's how they attract mates. All right, so you might be wondering if cicadas can cause harm to you or your pets or your trees or anything like that. And I'm here to tell you that they cannot. So cicadas do not bite, they do not sting, they cannot pinch you. Uh, they might accidentally bump into you while they're flying because you've probably noticed they're pretty clumsy, um, but they cannot harm you in any way. Uh, and as far as your pets go, like if you're worried about your dogs eating too many, that could be a concern, especially if you have a very tiny dog, mostly because their wings are just really indigestible, but they're not poisonous or venomous or anything like that, so you don't need to worry about that. And as far as your plants, if you've got a beautiful garden in your backyard this year, it's going to be okay because they don't eat plants. They don't really eat as adults. They might suck a little bit of plant juices here and there, but you will never notice. It will never do any damage. Um, the one thing that they do, like we said earlier, is they lay their eggs in tree branches, right? So if you've planted or your parents have planted a really pretty tiny fruit tree this year, you might consider covering it in some kind of netting to keep it safe. 
Um, so that's about the only thing that is ever concerning about cicadas. And I know that they're a little scary because they don't really look uh, like us and that's okay. <laughs> um, but they're very important to the environment. They are here in massive quantities and when they all die and fall to the ground later this year, they're gonna provide a ton of nutrients for all of the plants um, in the area uh, as they recycle their nutrients back into the ground. And they're also obviously creating a huge food source for a lot of other animals right now. You're gonna see a lot of really healthy looking squirrels and birds in your neighborhood. Um, so yeah, cicadas are really beneficial. And we're just wanting to know that everybody knows that.